and welcome to Echo Night Beyond. This episode of Echo Night takes place on the moon in a far-flung future from what we know of the early 20th century. Let's start before we get right into this. I thought I heard someone calling my name. My fiance, Claudia, and I were on a space trip. Suddenly, there was an intense shock and roaring sound. A massive shock as the shuttle crashed onto the moon. That's all I remember. I'm slowly starting to come to, but I can't sense that Claudia's here anywhere. Richard Osmond. He and his fiance Claudia are going to the moon to get married when they had a crash. It does seem like this crash happened a little bit ago, given the state of things. This is the first Echo Knight and the only Echo Knight that appears on the PS2. From software, after a few years of getting to know the PS2 and its limitations, began had a sort of renaissance in the years 2003-2004. Over the course of that time, they would release six plus games, including Armored Core 3, and, actually no, Armored, yes, Armored Core 3, Kuan, and this game, as well as Shadow Tower Abyss. In a way, it's the first golden age of of from software games in my opinion most of my favorite games from them come from this like prolific year for from software especially kuan and shadow tower abyss like the other two they were all advertised together and there was a huge marketing blitz in japan now remember, from software self-publishes in Japan. They don't have to rely on Bandai Namco or Ubisoft or any or Agetech in Japan. So um, with their partnership with Famitsu, they released and Denkenki, they would release like huge like marketing booklets. And I think I'm putting them up right now, but you can have a glimpse at some of the advertising that we found for this game in Japan. Very excited to show some of the characters and the evolution of Echo Knight for the PlayStation 2. Still playing with the first person. Um, we have a flashlight, which has a couple of different modes. We're going to turn that out for now, or turn it, turn it down low. And now we're going to take a look at our surroundings. Looks like any other airplane in the world. And it doesn't look like there's anyone else here. But there is a flask, so we can take this. Uh, 
This game also does use analog sticks. Again, if you are fast enough, you will die to the first environmental fall in the game. It's definitely a From Software game. This broken body is interesting. Wires protrude from its neck. The stewardess was an android, and that is something you should keep in mind as we go through this story a little bit more. Androids are a thing. Those of you who know what I'm being coy about know exactly what I'm being coy about. Let's move on. As you can see, Richard has a heart meter, which is currently going up. You're still here. Leave, Leave now. now. You should be hanging around, around here. here. Otherwise, Otherwise, they'll find, find you. you. Yeah, everybody will die. die. You'll, You'll die, die too. too. Flask. I'm no good without, without it. it. Bring, Bring it to me. me. Give it to, to me now. now. So we can have our hot bar come up and we can give him the flask we found. This is it. If I drink this, this everybody will disappear. disappear. Once again, our main villain is the fog. Let's turn off our flashlight for a minute and we can see how dark this game gets and how you would actually need it. But we're turning it off for a moment so that I can uh, take a look at our stuff. We have notes, we have items, which let's take a look at. The initials R O are engraved on the inside. We can spin it around, take a look. If you can look real closely, I'm trying to get a good angle, you can definitely see that it is engraved, that From Software attention to the detail. We can take a look at this image. Nothing's written on the back, but this is a photograph of Claudia, our fiance. And this is a med kit, which obviously. As I began to say, on the bottom left hand corner is a heart monitor. And unlike in the first two games where you had health depicted by a moon, Richard is dictated by his heart. And if his heart beats too fast because of ghosts, he has a heart attack and dies. That's about it for health in this game. There's no like gauge where you take a little bit of damage and then when you hit zero, you're done. You have a heart attack and die. So the map of this game is, like many from software maps, somewhat useless. Although uh, with the PlayStation 2, it is no longer a flat map but a 3D slice image of the moon station that we're in and have gone through. In here is the notes. It also shows the completion of our game. So let's take a, a quick look. Claudia Selfer, female. 
While taking a trip into space, the shuttle she and her fiancé were traveling aboard crash-landed on the moon. She disappeared at some point during the time that her fiancé was unconscious. Where could she have gone? SWW105, female. Lifelike android designed to carry out the duties of a stewardess aboard the space shuttle. The unit was damaged during the crash and continuously repeats fragments of its program announcements. Hmm. Dudley Tungsten, the ghost who was sitting on the floor in the parlor. He seemed to regain some of his composure after taking a deep draught from his flask. The last words before vanishing were a warning about the fog. The left side of the passenger cabin suffered extension damage during the crash. Oddly, there are no passengers to be seen anywhere. A hastily scrawled message is visible on the back of one of the seats and reads, Come to the facility. The shuttle's two-floor parlor consists of a meeting area on the second floor and a bar on the third. The bar was heavily damaged in the crash. And we have no recordings. Okay. This game is extraordinarily difficult to emulate, apparently. The area is deserted. This game has required software emulation for quite a long time. This is also in software emulation. Hardware emulation apparently doesn't super work, considering some of the... the layers that are employed in this game. Um, such as the, the flashlight, HUD announcements, and the like. We can also run in this game if we felt like it, and it'll come in handy soon, but it does increase our heart rate, so use it sparingly. I've had this game for a few years, actually, and because of how difficult it is to emulate, I haven't recorded it. I've been waiting for some euro to allowing me to upscale it so that it can look as good as it possibly can, but I don't know how how long that's going to take. This game was released in 2004 in the Americas, and probably the last in the slate of the, the Renaissance that I mentioned. It's a door. So, this first couple of areas is actually really familiar to me in that I've gone through it a number of times testing different different stuff Once again, our save points are an emergency telephone. This was from another test.
as we descend into the fog, which we have been warned about already. Being startled immediately jumped Richard's heart rate to the 150s. I've had those palpitations uh, outside of exercise, and uh, let me tell you, those are not fun. So we have a ventilation control device. So let's hop across the, the people mover and see what we can find. And that is Nikolai. That is actually the notorious charging layer that doesn't appear on hardware emulation at all. You want to be economical with your time because your flashlight only has so much battery in it. Let's see if Nikolai knows anything about Claudia. Nikolai is a good guy, but let's move on. It looks like somebody was trying to block the escalator, so let's move backwards and go up the other side. Uh, 
side strafing is still on these controls, which actually is quite handy. And uh, that was rude, but we'll move on and not comment much about how rude some of these ghosts are. So here is our home bases. Home bases are going to be the monitor rooms. The Unlike the first two games where you are playing with light to drive away the PKs, you are looking at a lot of cameras, which is really cool, but can get really old. I really like this game, but I, I'm... This is the big ding about it over Echo Knight, like under Echo Knight 2, is that gameplay comes down to looking at a lot of screens. So let's look at their first bunch of screens. So you can zoom in with the triangle. And so we can take a look at the ghost that drove us away. There is caution tape right at the bottom. It looks like, honestly, that um, this ghost was scared, which is fairly standard for ghosts. What is good about this sort of thing is because your health is so tied to your heart rate, you can really plan where you're going to be going and how you're going to get there. Very good if you can pretty much memorize map components without having any danger associated with them. And there are specific things you are looking for when you're in these cameras, but it's better if I showed you when we come across them. And this is the place we were just at. There is Nikolai. And you can see where we are, there's a little orange pyramid. And this is the beginning of the escalators. And this is what is moving up and down, because it's broken, obviously. Thanks, Richard. Top of the escalators. Not much to see here. But here is the aforementioned green gash. So what you want to do is you want to zoom in and hope the game triggers. Don't come near me. Don't come near me. You monster. Don't come near me.
the cameras, as it turns out, have recorded more than just what they see, but also echoes of time, specific echoes in time. And so by pointing our cameras at these places, we are able to see important moments, such as that one. And this is ahead of us. Another people mover. Doesn't seem like there's much to do, but we can save it. So that's what we are gonna do. Let's check the next door over. Please insert car key. And it looks like we'll be back here later. Rude. Just rude. Take a look at this door. It's been a while. What's the matter with you? You look strange. Do I look funny? I've been alone since you left. Why don't you come to my room later? It's next to the center hall. to catch up on. And yes, that is from software doing lip flaps for a 2003 game. So let's head over to the artist's room.
which is over here. So as you continue the game, if this isn't obvious, as you allow members of the expedition and moon base to pass on, they get painted here. Ah, you're here. Please, make yourself at home. A shuttle crashed some time ago. A lot of people were aboard. But now, everybody's dead. And that black shadow, I can manage myself being alone. I'm an android. But I'm glad that you're back. Since you left, I've been painting pictures here. Pretty pictures, all alone. I don't know why I paint pictures. Before I knew it, I was painting pictures. And we'll be making ourselves at home indeed. Grabbing that. You see that thing on the desk? You can take it with you. Hope you'll find it useful. It's a sedative, and basically it's a heal item, considering how health works in this game. So now that we're in the moon base's nexus, we'll be turning on the light soon. This is the center of where everything happens in the sh in the station. Alarm bells are ringing. Before you commit to that hallway, let's head up the stairs and see what's up there. Over here is the observatory. So okay, let's commit to the people mover and head across. Older model extinguisher.
and we find ourselves a monitor room. So let's investigate what's going on in this place. Digital display. Flashing numbers are visible on the monitor. And um, this is a date. And they're not different numbers, but they are part of the date. So 2044-08-13. So we're in the year 2044, August 13th. Very important for later. The next camera shows us another door. It looks to be the observatory. Yep. And this is the people mover we were just on. And this is pointed at another door. Turns out there is a ghost here. He is saying, where are you, Carol? There is no subtitles for, like, ghostly speech, I guess. And this is the person calling for Carol. It's an employee workstation and there's a book on the desk. It's a solar panel control room. Looks like some warning happened when things went down. Doesn't seem like there's much that way. Doesn't seem like there's much that way either. Over here... Something a little bit different.
Victor. Here's another ghost meandering around. Victor. And over here. Please, Victor, there should still be some good batteries somewhere. What? what? I, I don't want to be left alone here. Victor, my dad gave this to me before my first flight. I'm giving this to you. I promise it'll protect you. You know you're not as weak as you think you are. But Captain... Looks like the Captain was trying to reassure Victor. And just like the PS1, we want to save early and we want to save often. So let's go back across and meet the man looking for Carol. So if you notice, as you approach, Richard's heart rate goes way up, or starts to climb. But as he starts talking to them and knows that they aren't dangerous, he'll, he'll calm down. This is a monthly report? Monthly report logbook. It must have belonged to a worker here. And you can read that, so let's let's do that now. Twenty forty, March thirty first. Power outages and blackouts are becoming a daily occurrence. The equipment is too old to be reliable any longer. A thorough inspection of all equipment is scheduled for next month. Note, first, that this takes place in 2040, but the date we already noted is 2044, in the middle of August. So it's been four years since everything went to pot in the space station. April 30th, 2040. Inspection of all power-related equipment revealed faulty wiring as the main cause of the recent power outages. We'll ask the director to contact headquarters regarding the problem, but they'll probably just tell us to focus on mining efforts. In the meantime, 
we're looking into system modifications that will hopefully prevent future outages. May 31st, 2040. A strange fog has been appearing in different areas of the facility. The problem seems to be tied to the ventilation system, and the person in charge of the work area, Mr. Dato, has expressed his concern. Other than this, oxygen shortage problems that plagued the facility since its inception appear to have been solved, and mining operations are going well. June 30th, 2040. The fog continues to fill the facility, but doesn't seem to have any impact on oxygen levels. A report regarding the situation has been sent to headquarters by the director, but their response was just to push ahead with mining operations. I have a bad feeling about what will happen if things remain as they are. System reset. Please enter the date. Entry confirmed. Deploying solar panels. I wonder if that's a book I can grab. Probably not. We can't like move furniture like we could in the other two. Echo Knights. The ghost has disappeared, but he has left us a video disc. It says, Trip with Dad. So now one of our option, our goals is to find Carol. And reunite father with his daughter. Now, the power in the Nexus is on, and we can have blessed light in a place we'll be traversing many, many times. Probably humming Moonlight Sonata vis-a-vis -vis from software, like from the opening. Funny story about Moonlight Sonata as we're traversing. My third grade teacher would start every morning by giving us graham crackers and milk and making us listen to Moonlight Sonata every morning for an entire school year. And, um, not the most fun thing. So I actually grew to hate Moonlight Sonata, but I really enjoy the uh, Moonlight Sonata remix that plays at the beginning of the Echo Knight Beyond game. I'm not quite sure why, but I, I really like it. I think it's the beat that they put in the back down. So now that we can look around, let's take a look around here. We probably don't need the flashlight on. Well, 
there is something on the floor I do know. Ah, oh, there it is. There we go. So there's another syringe there. And now I think what we're going to be doing is we're going to plop ourselves over in the spaceport. Or no, there is something else here. Uh, the residential area. As it turns out, I think we came from the spaceport, so... Now granted, let's, let's cut Richard a little bit of slack. He's in a full spacesuit. Those things are really heavy. Him walking at normal- <laughs> running is normal speed for everybody of us. Every one of us. Probably explainable by the fact that he's in a spacesuit. It seems he has found Carol, but he can't get through to her. So we are working into something fairly dangerous for Richard right now. And as I warned, yes, we are definitely in a way. Let's explore a little bit. Uh, there's a monitor station right here, which means where you should be fairly safe. Continuing our tradition of Richard leaves every door open that he finds. video playback machine that still works. There is a safe space, but let's take a look at these cameras. Let's see what we're getting ourselves into. Pinups never change. Table's a bit of a mess. Over here. There's something on the bed that we need to grab. The bed is definitely not made. Table's messy. The bed's not made.
Stop all that nonsense talk about ghosts. Ever since we found that stone, strange things have been happening. Don't worry about it. Our director's pleased, and that's what matters. There won't be any more oxygen shortages. It'll actually be nice to work here. But Mr. Gold... Listen, Alan. We just work here. We do what we're told without question. Hey, let's go. Once again, we are appraised of the, the dire situation in the station. Before they found the, quote, stone, people have been following the Echo Knight LPs, probably can jump to conclusions as to what stone they're mentioning. And the fact that we are mining on the moon means this is definitely a From Software game. See if we can't get a clear image of Carol, who the fog has turned into a PK. What sort of place is it here? Fog. This fog created that ghost. Somehow, I must find a way to clear this fog. What? Whoa! Seems like we've seen uh, Nikolai's demise. That Carol mm. got him. Screen is illuminated, child's drawing. More bunks. Seems like this was one of those really long-term mining assignments where you would have to take your family because reasons. For here, something written on the wall. Definitely something that they got out of Shadow Tower Abyss, which also wrote a lot of things on the walls and did come out just pretty much the same time. Looks like it's a game. Oh, medicine containers. Pictures and books in the nightstand. Here in the lobby, there's a lot of fog. Can't really make out a whole lot. There's a laboratory over there off of the renovation area. And over here, Hey, 
Who's there? Uh, 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 sorry. I told you that if those two things get mixed together, they'll generate high heat. Be careful. Sorry, I I'll set them apart. You guys just don't listen to me. And that's something we need to definitely keep in mind for later. And later being next time on Echo Knight. Next time on Echo Knight Beyond slash Nebula, we will continue to meander around the, res the residential area, and hopefully we'll be able to save Carol from this diabolical fog that seems to have caused her to go temporarily mad. Her father's waiting for her, so... We need to reunite them. And we'll continue getting into the mystery of this station. At the station, we, we think that things happened four years ago. So first of all, the question is, why were they still sending shuttles here? And if they weren't still sending shuttles here, how has Richard been unconscious for four years? And uh, we've already heard the stone, so we know that the stone has made its way up to the moon. Like we can get from the, the good ending of Echo Knight, Namuri no Shihaisha, the stone didn't exist on Earth anymore. But we're on the moon now, so... And anyway, thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you guys next time on Echo Knight beyond. See you next time.